Well, welcome to this week's edition of the Don't Argue, of course, with the superstar himself in Kirk Gilly. All thanks to Palmerbet. And Gids, I've got to ask you off the top, mate, uh, disappointing origin number one for the Blue Baggers last Wednesday, buddy. Yeah, that was a tough one, mate. I uh, I was out for a couple of beers pr- prior to the game, mate. Made sure I got home before kickoff and slipped the other boots on. So, yeah, mate, it was a real tough. I tell you, I, I went to bed pissed off, to be honest, Matty. <laughs> I was um, yeah. it was a missed opportunity for for the Blues boys. Like first time they they you know back in Sydney after about three years being away and. Huge crowd and and uh, obviously very vocal from what the commentary was saying before uh, as they ran out. But big missed opportunity for the Blues and a huge win for Queensland. So Blues have got to do it the hard way now, mate, and win win over in Perth, which is a neutral ground, and then uh, decide back in Brisbane if if that's what uh, if that's what plays out. It's almost like, to be honest, kids, you probably wouldn't mind game two being up in in. Brisbane, would you? You know, like it, it might get them up and about a bit. The old neutral venue, it's always a tricky one, isn't it? Yeah, it's a tricky one. I mean, it's a beautiful stadium by the looks of it. And uh, hard yeah, but it, look, yeah, yeah. So, look, I think I'd rather go to Perth, to be honest, for, for the second one rather than going to Brisbane and, and Queensland potentially going, you know, two wins in a row and series is over. But um, look, even if the Blues go to Perth and get a victory, uh, going back to Brisbane, the, the statistics are stacked against New South Wales as far as deciders in Brisbane, probably pretty much similar to what Queensland deciders have been to Sydney. But um, look, they've got to do it the tough way now. And, and I guess the question is, will Freddie make any changes? Will he stick to the, the same team? What would you do, Gids? Oh, I'd probably make a couple of changes. I'd, I'd like to see maybe Coruscant come off the bench. Um, I just think, he, you know, he brings some speed. He's, he's, he's really skillful with the ball around the ruck. Um, so I know uh, Freddie had Stephen Crichton there come off the bench. And, and look, it, it was a clean swap between... Tony Staggs and Crichton because uh, Staggs injured his shoulder, but I would probably go with a with another another hooker on the bench um, just for you know a bit, bit of speed as well and a bit of creativity. He could even play lock Coruscant. Cor- and what a coaching debut! We spoke about it last week. We spoke about it in the Origin preview, all thanks to Palmerbet as well. But coaching debut of Billy Slater, one from one, first uh, first taste of senior coaching, unbelievable. Yeah, decent start. I think that, yeah, that was always a concern for everyone who uh, has probably played for New South Wales and, and is a, you know a former player who's tuning in for that game. You know, so yeah, you know, I played alongside Billy in, in the Test team um, a number of times, and he's got you know he's got great leadership skills and he, you know, so smart as far as knowledge of the game. And you know, he supported himself with staff that uh, you know Kevin Smith and, and Jonathan Thurston, uh, Josh Henne as well too, I believe. And yeah, it's a pretty decent lineup, but. Um, Anyway, that's all right. Um, mate, New South Wales, do it the tough way now. It'll be even sweeter victory, mate, when we knock them over in Brisbane <laughs> in the third one. <laughs> oh, I like a little bit of confidence, and it is. It's a fast, hard deck over there at uh, Optus Stadium. So um, it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, which side that favours. But we'll talk about that more, no doubt, in uh, Game 2 Origin Preview, all thanks to Palmer Ben. Let's have a look at the bunker review, mate. Of course, uh, round 14 action. And the biggest talking point, of course, Monday night football. And, uh, well, how the hell did the Bulldogs do that to Parramatta last night? That was an absolute shellacking by 30 points, kids. Absolute touch-up. And I don't think anyone's seen it come. I'll tell you, if you put your money on the, the dogs, uh, you're a brave, brave punter. But, um, I mean, if they got a return on that, well, well done. But, yeah, mate, totally unpredicted. I think just, you know, with the dogs' season this year, obviously, sacking Trent Barrett, um, and then, you know, being inconsistent and defensively they've struggled. But, mate, they were just – they were on. I, I, I watched that game and, you know, some of their push in their attack and offloads and Matt Burton, you know, he's such a talent, talented player and he's kicking games awesome. Beautiful left foot on him, he has. Um, so, yeah, it was an absolute touch-up. And, and the Fox, mate, it was a decent response for the Fox. Obviously, um, didn't make the Origin team this year and that, obviously yeah, that was pretty controversial. But Did come out with a hat-trick that game. Yeah, that's, a, that's so, the only way to respond. Yeah, it is. It is. So it'd be interesting to see if Freddie picks picks him, or or maybe even goes with a, a um, Suwali on the on the wing. Yeah, so there's a bit of talk about that too. Hey, listen, huge win a, for the dogs. It was a favourites weekend, kids. Uh, seven out of the eight winners, apart from the Bulldogs, um, got the job done. Uh, who are you putting a line through in 2022? The Knights are currently in 12th place on 10 points. Raiders sitting in the 11th spot on 12 points. That surprised me, to be honest. Dragons, 10th on 14 mm. points. And the Sea Eagles are 9th on 14 points. Who are you putting a line through, mate? 
And this is a tough question, I reckon, because you're nice. Oh, yeah. They're the ones that head up the list. Well, look, if I'm, if I'm like, I know where my heart lies, and that's you know with the Knights, and I'd like to see them find some form with with ten rounds to go. But look, um, statistic wise, their their four and against is the poorest in the competition. The Knights boys, and if they want to get their season back on track, it's going to have to be through defence to start with, and they've got to build some trust and some belief defensively. Um, look, it does surprise me that the Raiders are only two points ahead of the Knights, and that's a big game for this weekend, Knights versus Raiders. But I don't know. I think, you know, the Seagulls, do they have enough in them to get it through the rest of the year without Tommy Turbo? And um, the, oh, I'm going to put the line through the Eagles, mate, at the moment. Not make the eight. <laughs> oh, mate. You, <laughs> the old, you stick back. <laughs> you. The old rival. <laughs> the old manly <laughs> Knights rival. Get mate. rid of them. I'll tell, <laughs> tell you what, you are unbelievable. Hey, what about the race for the top four, mate? Uh, who likes the best value for a top four finish? Um, Palmer bet odds currently Storm are $1.04. Cowboys $1.30. Eels are $2.50. Broncos $2.70. And the Sharks at 3 bucks. Do you see any value there? Uh, any of those teams? I, I, yeah, I see some value in the Sharks. And, and I tipped them you know, right before round one. That They were in my top four, uh, I believe, if we go back to the uh, the footage. You know, I just like that. They'd recruited a I'll few give players. You a and, there, spot on. Yep. Yeah, so they were in my top four you know, prior to kickoff. And, and they're still going to remain in my top four. So my top four, as I see it, you know, Panthers obviously storm. Um, I see the Cowboys still kicking on, which are, I, you know, I certainly didn't predict them being in the top four at the start of the year. I had the Eels there. And the Sharks. So I just think there's still some uncertainty around the Eels and, and where they're at as far as their consistency. And, and you know, as soon as they, there's a, an average or a poor performance, geez, they cop some, some, some flack uh, from the media, from their own fans. And, and mate, they're under pressure again this week after that loss. Yeah. So I see yeah. them dropping out of the top, my top four from the start of the year. Yeah, right. I love it, mate. And there's still three bucks of Sharks. Uh, three, three bucks. Three. So you're getting some value yeah. there. So uh, you were on it before round one, and I can hand on my heart say uh, that was 100% correct. So well done to you, big fella, but you're still can't Say, it. we're only it's round 16, mate, right? So it's still a long way to go. I just, I'm still laughing because you won't put the line through the Knights, mate. Uh, <laughs> your position, I love it. Hey, let's have a look at this week's round 15 action, of course. Uh, in the NRL. Kicks off on Thursday night. Dragons for the Rabbits. Uh, Dragons $2.70. Rabbitohs $1.47 at the line. The Rabbits minus 5.5 at dollar ninety. Some key stats. The Rabbits won their round nine matchup 24-12. So got the job done pretty comfortably there. Souths have won their last eight straight games against the Dragons. That's the big kicker for mine, Gids. Yeah, that goes back a number of years. That doesn't eight games straight against the Dragons, but mate, I've bucked the trend with all the stats on this one, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the Dragons. Um, yeah. Wind Stadium, it's yeah, it's a, you know I'm just I, I like when the Dragons play at Wind Stadium. I feel like that's their that's their spiritual home and where they where they belong. To be honest, um, they I know they jump around to a few different grounds, but um, I, I'm gonna go with an upset on this one. Mate. I'm gonna go with the Dragons. I just think Thursday night be freezing cold down there. Um, you know, I think Ben Hunt's in some really good form and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Dragons, mate. There's an upset in this one. Well, it's like the old uh, red and black on the roulette wheel, mate. Uh when you see kind of eight reds in a row, at some point in time the black's gotta come back, it's gotta bounce back. It's gotta happen. Gotta happen, mate. I reckon it might be this one. Right, eight Friday night football, six PM kickoff. It's the Sea Eagles take on the Cowboys. At four points park, the Cowboys on fire at the moment. Sea Eagles head to head two thirty one. Cowboys a dollar sixty two at the line. The Cowboys minus two point five a dollar ninety. Key stats: Manly won both games last year against the Cowboys. Defense wins in the Cowboys nine wins. They have not let in more than sixteen points, so they are really strong defensively. Gids, do they get the job done here against the Manly Sea Eagles, who you're riding off? Remember. You're giving them the big yeah, I am. Time. No, I'm 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 right on the Cowboys here still, and I, and look, I I, I got to say it again, I I didn't expect the Cowboys to be certainly anywhere near the top four at the start of the year, but look, they're just playing with plenty of belief and confidence. Scott Drinkwater's going really well at at fullback. Um, Tom Dearden, who obviously I think he got shifted on from the Bronx there at one stage. I'm pretty sure he, he was on the outer at the Broncos, that's for sure. But Matt, he seems to be playing. Really well, and with plenty of confidence taking on the line. Um, so definitely, the I'm on the Cowboys with this one, and I'm going to get get on the Cowboys thirteen plus, mate. Some good value there, three three thirty. Oh, Jason Tomalolo, mate, he's, he's flying. He's playing some bigger minutes. He looks happy and content. Yeah, they're playing good so, rugby at the moment. To be honest, I reckon they're, uh, they're they're playing with some belief and confidence, aren't they? 
Yeah, Matty, you, you, you hit the nail on the head with that stat, mate. They, they, Cowboys nine wins, they haven't let in more than 16 points. I, I remember as a player, that was always your target, um, you know, defensively to try and keep the opposition around that 14 to 16 points because you're always in the game. You know, you're yeah. only one try away from, you know, building building some um, some momentum again. And and if you're keeping the opposition to 16 points, you're, you're in with a chance and that's a great stat for them. Yeah, beautiful, mate. Double header Friday night, of course, 7.55 at Amy Park in Melbourne. It's a storm taking on the Broncos. This would be a cracker for mine. Storm are $1.15. Broncos $5.50 head-to-head. At the line, the Storm minus $17.5, $1.90. Key stats here, kids. Storm have won 10 straight against the Broncos. That yeah. is a big stat. And in the last four wins by the Storm v Broncos, they have scored 40-plus points in each game. 40 12 wow. 46, 46, 8, and 40, 40, uh, 44, I should say. That, to me, says that, uh, I'll tell you what, the old Storm, they own the Broncos at the moment, don't they? Yeah, they're all signs are pointing towards the Storm in this one, mate. And I, look, I'm going to go for the Storm. I'm going to back the Storm in this one, 1 to 12, which you can still get some decent value, mate, there, 1 to 12, the Storm. Um, but yeah, I. I I, that, I can't that's go a past domination, the isn't it? That, that is like, that is dominating a side, isn't it? Well, mate, you remember at the start of the year that they, they had they were had scored the most amount of points um, for ever than any other team previously. Amazing over 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 a number of weeks. So, um, but mate, that, I must say that they've, they've missed Pappenhausen. I can see he's on an extended bench, so he must be close to getting back to uh, to that number one position for the Melbourne Storm. But yeah, won't the young, won't the young ladies be happy about that getting big Pappenhausen back out there for the store, mate? I don't know, mate. They, they might be happy with him off the field. He might have a bit more time <laughs> <laughs> but Matt, it's it's uh it's my match of the round, mate. This one, Storm Storm versus Broncos. I think um look, it's a it's a good indicator to see where the Broncos are at. You know, they're obviously strung a number of wins together and they uh, again they're playing with plenty of belief in confidence, which is uh which I'm sure is great to see for for uh, the Brisbane town, but this will be a real, real test to see where they're at in the in the season. Right, the next game Saturday afternoon, three pm at uh, Coffs International Stadium. It's the Sharks v the Titans, head to head. Sharks a dollar twenty five. Titans at four bucks at the line. The Sharks minus twelve point five, a dollar ninety. Some key stats here: Sharks have won their round eleven matchup. So not that long ago, twenty five eighteen. It was a tight enough affair, but they've won. Yeah. The Sharks have won their last six straight against the Titans. This is uncanny that we're seeing this. This is the third game in a row where there's some big winning uh, streaks against some of the opposition. Yeah. Players. Yeah. Look, the Titans are struggling. They're sitting in last position at the moment. And, uh, you know, I feel for Justin Holbrook. You know, he, they came in eighth last year. And it was, I, I think everyone thought this is a real step forward for the Gold Coast. You know, the Gold, all Gold Coast teams have, you know, probably struggled over the years. And uh, we thought last year with, with some progress forward for the Gold Coast Titans, but unfortunately they, they've slipped back to the bottom of the ladder at the moment. And, um, and you know, I just think the Sharks outfit and the team that they have on paper is just going to be too good. So uh, I'm going to go for the Sharks, man, on this one. Right, Oak, Saturday uh, afternoon, 5.30 p.m., Morton Daly Stadium. It's the Warriors <laughs> v. the Panthers. Uh, and I'll tell you what, you've got a feel um, for uh, the Warriors coming up against the might of the Penrith Panthers. So the Panthers are $1.05. Warriors at 10 bucks here. Gids at the line. Panthers minus 23.5, ninety. Key stats, Panthers have won five straight against the Warriors. Panthers, Taylor May has six tries in his last eight games. I love what they've been able to do. They're obviously living in Australia and they're playing in Australia every game and they Gids. We must take our hat off to the yeah. Warriors. But, geez, it must be dragging on their season from a bit now. Yeah, for sure. Like, I think we've all sort of forgot about you know COVID and where the Warriors are still still placed at the moment, and they're they're still away from their hometown, their their family. So yeah, it's a it's a, it's a it's a yeah, it's been a really tough gig for them, and and I think they've well they haven't overachieved, but I think they've earned the respect of a lot of their opponents and their fans and the competition to be doing still living in Australia and, and trying to trying to um, you know win games and, and bust their bust their bum for their for their country and their, their town back home. But um, I can't go past the, the, the Panthers battle this way. And I'm going to get, jump on that one, mate. The Taylor May anytime try scorer. Love it. I think that's a nice one to get on. There's, there's not a lot of value in the Panthers head-to-head on this one. Uh, so Taylor May, mate, let's go with him anytime try scorer. Love it, kids. Absolutely. Saturday night, 7.35 I mean, p.m. Yeah. I was just going to say, the, the, the great Stacey Jones, mate, obviously taken over as uh, 
his caretaker coach from Nathan Brown, who, who's obviously been shifted on because um, he wasn't prepared to, to go back to New Zealand. But uh, yeah, you know, he was a he was a legend of the game, Stacey Jones. I'm sure he's got a lot of respect of the current players, that's for sure. And you never know. Like sometimes when this happens, kids, uh, you know, the, the can galvanize fire up a bit. That's right, you know. Uh, and he'll be keen to make an impression too in the back half of the season. Saturday night, sure. seven thirty-five PM, Combank Stadium. It's the Eels taking on the Roosters. Um, wow, we uh, <laughs> eels are a dollar eighty. Roosters at two bucks. Eels minus one point five at a dollar ninety. Roosters won their round ten clash thirty-one twenty-four. And the Eels, Dylan Brown, has three tries in his last four games. I, I just they're, they're just such a hard side. Their best is unbelievable, Parramatta, but their worst is terrible. Yeah, yeah no, you're right, mate. It's just there's too big of a gap between their best and their worst, unfortunately. And there's just too many doubts around when they hit a bit of adversity, I think. And that's where we've seen them when they've made the semis over the last, oh, who knows what, 20 years, 30 years since they won a comp. So it's um, there's just still that that um, vulnerability in the Eels and, and whether they're the real deal when they get to um, to the end of the year. But they've, yep, they've hit a bit of a, a hurdle in the road at the moment. It's just, um, let's see how they respond after a, a pretty disappointing loss where they've come under a lot of criticism from, you know, their fans and and the commentators within the media at the moment. But, mate, I just want to, yeah, highlight, you know, there was a lot of talk about um, Joseph Sawali when the, the, the Roosters signed him. We They pinched him from South, you know, and there was... A lot of expectation and hype around him, but geez, I, I can I can now see why there's been yeah so much talk about him as a as a youngster. He's still only 19 years of 19 years of age, and uh, you know they're potentially talking about maybe bringing him in for for Origin too. And you know it's not just him in the air; it's not just his skill, but his his toughness in taking the early carries and actually running over the top of some of the forwards in uh, in those you know first one, two, or three uh, third tackles. Yeah. That's a real so, courage in that, isn't it? That's that's they're the they're the ones you want in the trenches, aren't they, kids? Especially for a nineteen year old, you know, in a yeah. in a winger. Um yeah. like he's I was talking to Denny Baderas about his attitude in in origin just as a fringe player uh in the squad. You know, I was never gonna play Origin one. And Bedsy said, mate, he just keeps coming up, asking questions. He I think he threw an average pass during the session. He grabbed Bedsy after that training session and threw a hundred passes before he left and like that type of attitude in a nineteen-year-old. That's unreal, mate. That, that's what he's willing, willing to learn and develop as a player. And that's that's a it's a lethal combination, mate. The talent and 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 willing to learn and work ethic, mate. That's the key. Work Something ethic, Brad Gidzy. Yep. Still got that work ethic. Plant. They tell me you're <laughs> in the pavement. Still, big fella, you're flying. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, next Roosters, day. mate. In the Roosters, end. right? Eh? Roosters. Yeah, actually, I, I must admit, I, I can't believe the odds there. I reckon the boys at Palmer bit have lost the plot, to be honest. Uh, two bucks. <laughs> Eels are a dollar eighty. I cannot work that that uh, that out. So I think <laughs> expecting, they're just expecting the Eels to bounce back, um, which they probably will. Um, as I said, they're just they're like Jekyll and Hyde. Hey, uh, Raiders v Knights Sunday, two p.m. GIO Stadium. Uh, Raiders a dollar twenty-seven. Knights three dollars eighty-one. To be honest, kids. I actually reckon this game should be spread a little bit more. Raiders minus 10.5 at $1.90. The key stats, Knights won both clashes last year. So that's that's maybe the... Don't, don't read into that. That's maybe <laughs> why. Raiders have four, have won four out of six at home this season. Their only losses were to the Eels and the Cowboys. Um, I, I must admit, I reckon the Raiders are an absolute Monty here, Gids. I'm a, I'm yeah, no, no, you're right, mate. You're right. The Knights are probably lucky to be at 380 at the moment. This stage head-to-head. Especially, mate, go, yeah, going down to, to Canberra, mate, this time of year. It's, you know, it's cold in Newcastle at the moment. She's, I, I think I've seen there last week or the week before, and it looked breezy. Mm-hmm. I've seen Lockie on the sideline, and he could barely talk. But uh, it, it, this will be the, the night's win of the series if they can pull this one off. But as I said earlier, they need to get their defence sorted. That's that's the thing that, that can only turn your season around and build some confidence. Because, look, every time you defend your line, you turn the opposition away from an attacking set, and the, you know, whether it's an error or a turnover or you defend the kick, it just builds confidence and builds belief in not just your defensive structure, but your, your, your performance. Yeah. So that's where it's got to start with the Knights boys and, and they can't afford to leak, leak points. Come on, they need to lift, mate. You've got a bit of belief in them. They need to have their own belief, kids. Oh, that's it, mate. That's it. I believe in you, blokes. Lift. <laughs> Come on, do. Come on. Hey, 
Hey, listen, final game, mate. Uh, Sunday, 4.05 p.m. at uh, Combank Stadium. It's the Bulldogs taking on the Tigers. Head-to-head, Bulldogs $1.80. Tigers at two bucks at the line. Bulldogs minus $1.5, $1.90. Key stats, they split the games last season. Uh, the Tigers have only won one game or have won a away win this season. And the Bulldogs have only two home wins this season. So can the Bulldogs make it back-to-back victories this weekend? They've got every chance to do so, Gids. Yeah, they do. Yeah, great opportunity. I mean, they, they actually take so much confidence out of that win last week. And I'm sure, you know, it would have been refreshing to sit down in, in a in a video review session, you know, watching so many uh so many try quality tries that they scored. So they'd have a real buzz around their their um their camp this week and I think they can back it up with a with another win this week against the Tigers, mate. So gonna go for a bit of a multi on this one I jump on the palm a bit app and I'm gonna go dogs to win, dogs one to twelve. 3.15 at this stage it is. Love it, mate. Jeez, you're even getting pretty fancy with the punning nowadays, mate. The, the boys are proud of it. They've taught you well. <laughs> um, yeah, no, look, great opportunity for them, you know, to yeah. see if they can... Uh, and for the Fox, mate, yeah, it, uh, it'll be it'll be, uh, it'll be stoked, mate. Three tries back, in the, back in, the, in the end zone where he wants to hang out, not the other end. Yeah, beautiful, mate. Now, listen, what's your best bet? What's your mouldy for the weekend, mate? What do you got for us? Well, mate, I, I, I'm going to – I did have a look on the palm of it and I had a little bit of a look at the Knights at least half-time. If they can't if they can't get a, an 80-minute win, Jeez, there's a bit of value. There's, there's a bit of value at them for half-time, 320. So that's my best value. Well, and so let's, you, uh, just let's, to be in front at half-time. Just, just to be in front at half-time. That's a start. <laughs> <laughs> and, mate, I'm going to stick with the Dragons. Uh, the Dragons is a bit of an upset there head-to-head. Um, yep. two, 270 they are so um, I, I like the way Ben, ben Hunt's playing he had a, you know, we had a rock solid origin series which we, we spoke about it. We, he, he seems to um, do year in year out so I think it could be a, an upset on the cards there at, uh, at Wynn Stadium Right, on, mate. Beautiful. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sadly say, mate, I reckon that the Raiders are an absolute <laughs> monty against uh, your Newcastle Knights, mate. $1.27. There's not much value there, um, that is for sure. But I just reckon they're going to get the job done um, for mine. Anything else over the weekend, mate? You're going to get along to any games? What's uh, what's planned, buddy? Uh, what's planned, mate, this weekend? Um, mate, I think it's a bit of a quiet one this weekend. I, yeah, a bit of a hit out there over the to weekend. Honest, got, got the, to got be the... honest, mate. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, we saw a little bit more. We saw the photos last week, and uh, <laughs> thank God I, well, they didn't put the video up of the uh, <laughs> and the karaoke mate, of, uh, of the forty. Yeah, you have a chat to my missus, mate. She's probably she's probably the one recommended. I have a quieter one this weekend and spend a bit of family time. Uh, yeah, mate, the the old fortieth went off went off uh, went off pretty good. I mean, I'd been. Uh, do having dress ups, karaoke, and dancing for the past twenty years, so it was kind of a fitting, fitting fortieth birthday, mate. That uh, it all come together like that again. Mate, your birthday's been rolling for the last fortnight, kids. Uh, make no mistake <laughs> about it; it's just a rolling fortieth. Hey, hey, listen, <laughs> gamble responsibly. That is the key message, of course, too, from Palm a bit. Um, whatever you do, gamble within your means and uh, do it responsibly. Uh, easy to download the app, easy to get involved. And, uh, well, we're looking forward to a really massive round 15 action of NRL this weekend. Gids, you have a cracking weekend, mate. We'll talk next week. Have a great weekend, Matty. All the best. Everyone, have a fun. <laughs>